Now, I have a special guest coming up right now who has found himself in the middle of a big controversy over the weekend. Somebody that's been on the program multiple times, somebody from around this area. He's actually the representative of District 88, which covers uh, Prattville and, and sort of that area just north of Montgomery. And so we're going to go ahead and bring him on right now. Will Dismukes of District 88 of Alabama. Welcome on to the program, Will. Hey, Caleb. It's, uh, I really appreciate you for letting me come on and talk to you for a little while today. Oh, yeah, certainly. And, and we're glad that you took some time out of your day to, to come and talk to the audience, because I know with this story and everything that's been going on, it's been probably a hassle for you. So if you could go ahead and, and just give us a quick summary of the story, because I thought about introing it and just giving it to the audience. But I think it makes more sense to let you kind of give the background and, and give everything from your perspective. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I came out and, and I've been for, you know, fairly vocal about not removing the monuments. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was not in the legislature at the time of the Monument Protection Act, but I've been vocal about it, not just because it's Confederate monuments, but if you really look across the country, it's not just Confederate monuments that they're going after. I mean, they're going after Union monuments. They're going after World War One, World War Two. You, know, you really name it, it. It's literally chances hearts going down right now. And um but I, what really stirred the pot, I guess, uh, is the best thing I could come up with, because I had been on the news a couple times about Anthony Daniels, uh, the House Minority Leader, saying that he wanted to defund Confederate Memorial Park. Mm -hmm. I came out and um, you know, said, obviously, on the news that I wasn't for it. Well, all was pretty quiet until the, the Democrat, the Alabama Democratic Party, came out with a fundraiser flyer, and they mentioned me in it, uh, but – it had a picture of Stone Mountain, Georgia on it. So I made a Facebook post making fun of their flyer. And 100% honesty, if under the leadership of, of Chairman uh, Latham, if the Republican Party used a picture from Georgia to raise money in the right. state of Alabama, you can pro I can promise you I would have commented about it. Right. So I mean, I, you know, I, yeah. Yeah, Go exactly. Ahead. No, I was just going to say, of course, that's, that's just a goofy news story. Yeah. And so I was like, ha ha. The Democratic, the Alabama Democratic Party is using a picture from Georgia to raise money in Alabama. I said, uh, and I'm honored that they would mention me in their flyer, uh, and we can move the state forward without erasing the past. That's the end of the story. Less than two hours later, Mr. Perry's released this statement, basically saying that I'm pro-slavery, that I'm an active Confederate. Uh, you know, basically, I, I guess like I'm still a Confederate soldier, whatever, and. Um, you know, and they, they come after me full force, and, you know, then I have people call me a racist and a bigot, and, you know, anything else under the sun that you can think of. The most disappointing thing, and I'll let you maybe ask a question or two, is the fact that they brought my wife and child into it. Yeah, I, there was a picture on my personal Facebook page, not my representative page, but my personal page of my uh, me, Amber, and Pratt in front of um, – it was Confederate Flag Day two years ago at Confederate Memorial Park, and I was mm -hmm. standing in front of the U.S. flag, the Alabama, the state of Alabama flag, third national Confederate flag, and the Confederate battle flag. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't really mind what anybody says or does to me. It, it does sort of bother me in the political climate that we have today that you would bring a picture of my wife and child into the mix. So, Yeah, th those are really two completely separate issues for me because, of course— uh, it doesn't really matter what the story is on the one hand. I'm always going to be against doxing and trying to bring people's families into it. Uh, that That's just so beyond the pale to me. Um, even when it happens to people that I dislike, there were people, for example, that were trying to dox the uh, a couple of the kids from the Parkland shooting there in Florida. Well, I certainly didn't agree with the political stances of those guys, but I also didn't think people like David Hall got to have people like protesters showing up to his house in the middle of the night to terrorize his family. Like, just right. because I disagree with the guy doesn't mean that I want to put his family on display and, and make his family a target. That's just so far outside the bounds of, of normal uh, civil procedure and, and a civil society that it just it shouldn't even be talked about, really. It is, and... Everything that we have today is on the Internet. I mean, if you want to find my address, if you want to get my phone numbers, if you do any research, you can come up with it. Sure. And uh, and when you start showing pictures of my wife and child, you know, it does concern me um, and, you know, kind of obsess me a little bit. And then he's talking about com coming together to move the state forward. And yet in the same sentence or in the same paragraph, he calls me little Will and makes these derogatory, sarcastic comments. 
and you know that's no way to get the to that's no way to get somebody on board to work with you you know i don't really care what you nickname i've been called a lot worse than little will but uh sure. <laughs> you know that i mean i am a sitting state representative and and um you know to to tell me that i need to work with you to go forward and then you sit there and and, and use sarcasm in the way that he did it that that's just not going to fly well, I can say this generally speaking as somebody that, that teaches debate and was a debater myself. Typically, when somebody resorts to personal attacks, it's because they can't win on the argument and they realize mm-hmm. that. So they're trying to distract by using some kind of ad hominem uh, strike. And, and that seems to be the case that was going on here. Um, just out of curiosity, though, I know that you have some personal history uh, of this. What is your family history with the Confederacy? Yeah, so I've got multiple great grandfathers on both, you know, my my mainly my dad's side, but through my great through my grandfather and my grandmother, mm-hmm. uh, that their their grandparents were. I had multiple grandfathers that were uh, in the Confederate States, and uh, you know fought for the you know fought for the South. One uh, was in the 46th Alabama. Uh, another one was captured at Fort Morgan. And, um, I had one other grandfather that, um, he was wounded, but, but he hung in there for, for, for the rest of the war. Um, uh, he was up in the Virginia area. So I've got a lot of family ties to the South. I grew up, I grew up on a plantation that we've owned since the 1830s. It's been in my family's name that, um, you know, is just, it's, it's been in my family forever. And, Mm. you know, I used to find stuff where the old, uh, houses were and, and from marbles to china doll heads i mean you name it i, I found it out there uh civil war relics it was a camp during the war you know and, and so i grew up just enamored in in the history of our country and the history of the south and you know it's it, so it's it's all really in a sense i guess you could say near and dear to my heart every every bit of it the good and the bad Right, and, and that's one thing that I think that there's a bit of a disconnect here because uh, your connection to your family here in the South w- would be that, and, and of course some of it fond, um, and, and some of it probably not. I mean, in my own family yeah. history, not in Alabama, but in Georgia, I had people that fought for the, uh, for, for the Confederacy, and, and I even have a couple that were slave owners, and I actually found yeah. that out through research, and of course I don't condone that, um, right. but... It is so ridiculous that I think the standard that we've reached, and you actually kind of alluded to it in going through this whole story, is what we've basically done is made the default of every person, representative, public figure, and unfortunately some that even aren't in the the public sphere, that you're assumed to be, especially if you're a, a generic Christian straight white guy from the South, you're assumed to be a racist until you can prove otherwise. And that's a ridiculous standard to set. Yeah, it, it, it definitely is. You know, it's, if you have a Confederate flag in a picture, if you have one in your house, then automatically you're, you're you know, you're this white supremacist bigot that, that you know, hates all black people. And it, it's really mm-hmm. a shame because it's not for me in my life and for my family. And, you know, it's not that way at all. I mean, we have love for all people of all colors, all backgrounds. And, um, and you know, it's just disappointing when all I'm doing is standing up to say, hey, I don't want our history lost or erased or changed by the revisionists that are that are at hand right now. And, you know, it's so much bigger. It is so much bigger than a Confederate monument. You know, it's it's all the monuments. I mean, I, you wake up and read Fox News this morning and they're tearing down Teddy Roosevelt. They're getting ready to tear down Teddy Roosevelt statue right. in, uh, in New York. I mean, the day before that, it was George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. I, it, Right, Christopher complete, Columbus, uh, yeah, even Columbus going down everywhere. Even monuments of Lincoln, and uh, yeah. they've defaced yeah. World War II monuments. Uh, World there, War One, you name it. There's one that actually defaced an entirely black regiment in the in That's the military right. in the Union Army. And that and that was in Minnesota. Yeah, they've they've taken down yeah. statues of Grant, who again, if they knew their history, Grant was the guy on the Union side fighting against Lee. So it just and, it yeah. is ridiculous. If Grant hadn't, if if Lincoln hadn't put Grant over, over the Union Army, then the outcome probably would have been completely different because Grant actually went on the offensive because he knew that they had the numbers of people that the South didn't have and could overrun them, you know. And uh, so, right. if it wasn't for Grant, things probably would have looked a whole lot different. And and they go and they, you know, San Francisco tears his monument down, and that's what I'm trying to protect 
is not just one specific set of monuments. It's all of them, in, including Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King. You know, I mean, because it, it wouldn't be the same if all of a sudden, you know, everybody was going after, uh, you know, the civil rights activist monuments as well. And, and I want to protect those because that's part of our history. I mean, that's part of the state of Alabama. That's part of our nation's history. Well, and that's the thing that really grinds my gears, too, is that a few years ago, really back in 2015, when this uh, when this debate really sort of reached ahead, and I was talking about it a lot on my show at the time as well, uh, the argument was, well, this is erasing history, and it won't stop here. It'll, they'll be going after Jefferson. They'll be going after Washington. We were routinely mocked for that, and now it's every day. We have a, a story of a new person that has no connection to the Confederacy whatsoever, them tearing down, defacing, or removing statues of those people. And, uh, you know, we, we've got to be super careful here because— uh, this is the reason that I, I sort of am an absolutionist on this. You, you just keep yeah. the history, you, you present it as fact, you, you tell the truth, and then let the chips fall where they may. And that does not seem to be the mantra of a lot of the people that are calling for the tearing down of monuments. At least somebody that specifically said, okay, we just want to get rid of Grant and Lee, and or sorry, we just want to get rid of, of Lee and basically anybody that fought the, for yeah. the Confederacy. I still think that that's an an incorrect position to take, but at least I understand where they're coming from. One of the things that upset me the most on that on that note, when uh, Minority Leader Daniels came out and said that he wanted to defund the park, right, was that uh, excuse me that we're sitting here trying to actually get this the statue down in Mobile of Admiral Steam uh, of Admiral Seams. We're right. trying to get it brought up to the Confederate Memorial Park. We're looking at, like, the Lynn Park statue, multiple other statues, and we're trying to figure out, you know, monuments, how to, how to get them to Confederate Memorial Park, how to make sure that, that they uh, are not, you know, just put away in a warehouse to collect dust or they just disappear. Mm-hmm. You know, we're trying to get them there, and then all of a sudden he's like, well, let's defund the park. Well, and, and that's it, that was one of the things that I thought was ridiculous. I actually did a segment on that whole thing because I grew up in Marbury. Like, I, I yeah, went to the yeah. park many, many times, multiple times a year most of the time throughout my entire childhood. My, my church had dinners there, everything. Uh, by the way, with, with black and white people that went to my church going to that park and enjoying the scenery and everything. Uh, but anyway, it's so ridiculous because you'll remember that for the longest time, the talking point when we were talking about removing the monuments, removing the flag, everything, the, the talking point from the left was, well, they belong in a museum. In fact, that's what President Obama said, that they should be taken down and put in a museum. Now they're talking about getting rid of the museums. Yes. So, like, where right. does it stop? I was, uh, I was talking to somebody earlier, and they said, well, one concern that I have is they said if we take it and we put a Confederate monument in Mobile in the History Museum in Mobile and a field trip goes there and a kid goes home and he tells his mom, hey, mommy, I saw a Confederate monument at the Mobile. You know, I'm, I'm probably call, incorrectly pronouncing the Mo- – I don't know the name of the Mobile, you know, their Museum of History down there. But sure. hypothetically speaking, they, they go down there and they come back home and they tell that they saw a Confederate – monument and all of a sudden the mom gets mad and goes and now there's a push to defund or dad uh to defund the confederate monument in mobile i mean the confederate uh the history museum in mobile and it's like where does it stop so if we all if we did bring one thing that i'm I'm really thinking about bringing forth is if a city i think the monuments should stay where they are but if a city is is bound and determined to bring the monument down why not Put a bill together uh, or an amendment to the uh, to the current pr- monument protection bill that says a city, if they take it down, they're responsible for the cost of taking it down, the cost of movement, moving it to Confederate Memorial Park, and the cost of erecting it there on the park at wherever the park decides that it fits best. At the end of the day, that monument will be there to be preserved for life, and it will be viewed for life for those who want to go and see it. And also, it's probably going to cost $25,000 or more when you talk about transporting it and re-erecting it after taking it down. And so, in a sense, they're still fine. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, the thing is, and, and you and I, I think, have never talked about this specifically. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first time you and I have, have come yeah. up with this. But I actually oppose the the act uh, that the state has to basically grant permission to a municipality to remove it. 
Um, you know, just because I'm a local control guy and a federalist. Right, right, right. Um, but at least something to that effect is in the thing that bothers me about the system that we have now that Attorney General Marshall has basically put in place, and I get it, Attorney General Marshall's just trying to follow the law and doing his job. I don't blame him for that. Um, but the the way that we've done is we've basically sold the the community's autonomy back to them. In other words, we're like, well, you can't make your own decisions about what goes up in your own parks and your own public spaces. Well, you can if you pay us a, a fee for it. I yeah. think at least what you're talking about takes a effort to preserve the history it gives the community some accountability and, and they have to think about it and, and sort of, uh, you know, contemplate that. I still kind of am, am, you know, hesitant to say that that should be something that is a requirement, but um, at least creating a system similar to that where they know that they have a space where it can go, that might actually take a little bit of pressure off of them. Yeah, the, the, to me, the, the whole problem is all of a sudden if everybody just starts putting everything down. And, right. Um, you know, I, I completely, you know, I'm, I'm, I, uh, am a hundred percent behind the monument, you know, protection bill. The tough thing though, is when I turn right around and we're talking about being a conservative, you know, it's like, well, you're giving the state, you know, complete control, um, of basically saying like, you know, it's wrong or right to remove it. Mm. But because of what's going on right now, I'm really thankful for it. But I do think if, Look, if $25,000 to most cities in the state of Alabama at the end of the day, that's not very much money. And if they want to bring it down, they're going to bring it down. And if they're going to take it down, we need to make sure that it's going to go somewhere that it will at least be put back up. Birmingham's monument from uh, Lynn Park is going to go to a field. It's crated up. It's going to go to a random field. And it's going to sit there until they can figure out exactly what they can do with it. Because nobody really knows right now exactly what's going to happen, but they don't want it to just go to a warehouse. And that's, you know, Mobile's talking about putting it in, in a museum down there. What happens when somebody complains about the museum, as I stated earlier? You know, and, and why not get it somewhere? The state currently funds uh, with a small percentage of the mill tax. It's only 1% of right. one mil of a six mil tax why not get them there where like you can't say that you went to confederate memorial park and were offended because there was a confederate monument there i mean the name is in the park right it, you you would think that someone that were triggered by that would have the good sense not to visit the yeah. confederate memorial yeah. park you would hope yeah um, if you're gonna get upset like how about just don't go Right. I mean, but but that's true of anything in Alabama. Like, I don't know. I'm sure that you've been to this at least once. The uh, museum that's only like three or four years old in the State Archives building, like that's a, a fantastic facility. And yes, it, yes, it yeah. does have a section because this is part of Alabama's history. It has a section on the Civil War talking about, uh, uh, you know, our role in that. And uh, it, it shows the good and the bad. It shows the things that were going on in the slave trade. And it also shows the things that were going on uh, you know, in, in recent times, it shows things like the civil rights movement. And so it shows the whole thing, which is what history is supposed to do. And that's yeah. the thing that I think a lot of people are, are really not realizing here. Let's just get rid of all the bad parts of history and keep what we like. And the problem is there's always going to be somebody that's offended by some portion of any time period that you're going to come in contact with. I mean, for Pete's yeah. sake, we're, we're censoring Friends episodes now because the 90s weren't woke enough. I, I think we can find some problem uh, with the new yeah. standards with any era in history, if that's the case. Yeah, I mean, one day, I don't know whether it's 50 years, 10 years, or 150 years, they're going to look back and they're going to say, what in the world in, <laughs> in 2020 were Will and Caleb thinking? Like, they must be awful people or, you know, the society in general must be awful people because, you know, like, I don't know, they, they got in the shower every day. Like, you know, I, I mean, who knows? Right. And um, we're looking back in the 90s, the 80s. You know, we're going back two, three hundred years. And, and uh, it just really, it's just really upsetting because it, it, it's, it's really a revisionist takeover, in my opinion. I mean, it's, well, that's why some people have been getting upset about the communists. But if you really mm -hmm. look at what, when communist takeovers have taken place in countries, what did they do? They went after the the past. They went after the things that were being taught, and they completely changed them and rewrote them. They burned the books. They tore down them statues, and and uh, 
you know, it was a complete alter of thinking. Well, and, and we are seeing the same thing play out here. One thing I did want to ask you, Will, though, because you and I have talked a lot in, in actualities, which is, you know, I, I think appropriate for the subject matter. Um, but there are going to be people out there that regardless of the facts, regardless of history, even when they look at somebody that's saying, hey, let's just preserve all of it and take the good and the bad. There's still going to be some people and, and probably people in your district that feel that you no longer represent them because of your stance on that. What would your message be to that person that feels a little bit um, disenfranchised or doesn't like the fact that you have a, a picture of you and your family in, in front of a, a rebel battle flag? Well, I think for a lot of people, you know, the one thing that I want to answer that I was accused of being pro-slavery is in no way am I pro am I pro slavery. You know, in no way do I think that it's okay or supported. But that I still represent you. All I'm doing is trying to make sure that that the past and the heritage of of our state and of our country is not erased. And that doesn't just apply to the time between the war between the states. I mean, it's all time periods of our state. It's protecting. Uh, some of the, the many monuments that are placed in Selma, Alabama, for instance, and it's also protecting those that are beside our courthouses uh, in all 67 counties, you know, in, in Alabama. And it's, it's so that we can learn and that we can work together in moving forward so that we don't take a step back. And in my opinion, we have really taken a step back in time. I think we have set ourselves back 50 years at the very least, maybe 60 and where we are today as far as working together and getting along and and um and it is a uh a upsetting and, and disappointing time yeah I, and there was one other thing that i wanted to ask you about because uh, i think you and i differ a little bit on this so i just wanted to yeah. kind of get an idea on this <laughs> i saw a post that you made the other day on the and i know you're going to know immediately when i talk about it uh, i'll bring this graphic up here uh, it's from the uh, a story about the SEC essentially boycotting and, and other conferences doing the same, anything from the state of Mississippi until they changed the flag. And yeah. uh, the statement that you made here is, as a landowner of Mississippi, I feel that the SEC commissioner needs to stick to uh, ensuring football is played this fall and stay out of the issues with the flag in Mississippi. So one thing that I, I wanted to bring up there. Yeah. Um, just, just to ask, uh, do you really think that the, the flag in Mississippi, uh, should remain the way that it is, or were you just giving commentary on it's inappropriate for the SEC commissioner to make a statement about that? So I view the flag of Mississippi, uh, really almost as if I view the same as the monuments that we have. I think the flag of Mississippi needs to remain the same. I don't think it needs to change. Um, I think it needs to be there, it's been there, and I think it needs to stay. But mm -hmm. my question to the SEC commissioner, who I wish would listen, is if you comment on a flag, and a person posted, that's a dear friend of mine, posted on my Facebook page about this very thing, why don't you get involved about abortion? Why don't you get involved about all the, all the matters that take place day in and day out in our states and our country that completely go against god and country but then all of a sudden you jump in there about a flag why not if you're going to go that route why not get involved in all of it no i, I agree completely and and my response to this because i don't know if you've seen this but there's actually been an update to this story conference usa actually did the same thing today um so my response to this was actually a little bit different than yours mm -hmm. because i actually think based on the the history that i've done the research that i've done the Mississippi state flag probably does need to be updated. I, I understand preserving monuments to history. You and I are in complete agreement on yeah. that. But, you know, when it comes to the state flag as being something that represents the whole of the state, I, I think it's probably time for an update and probably shouldn't include the uh, the battle flag there as a part of it. That's just my personal opinion. I'm yeah. an Alabama yeah. guy, so it doesn't matter. But yeah. ultimately, regardless of how I feel about that, the idea that a guy that runs... Uh, college athletic events should have a say in this and try to, you know, strategically punish people that he doesn't agree yeah. with. That's just silly. Yeah. It's, it's very silly. And at the end of the day, like it, it to me, uh, uh, Rich Anderson said it best. Like it's really a virtue signal and I'm not making fun because really the only sec championship deal that, 
that the uh, college bait that the SEC has a claim is you know the SEC championship in Hoover. Mm-hmm. But um, really, what what SEC championship deal are you going to threaten Mississippi with? Right, and, exactly. And, you know, so I like, mean, Woo-hoo. no no offense to our neighbors to the west, but you guys just yeah. don't host any right now. Yeah. We're 49th or 50th. I mean, you know, like, we still do hang on to the baseball SEC championship. So, tongue in cheek there. But what are we going to do when they come after the state of Alabama flag, Caleb? See, that's another thing. I've heard people say exactly the same thing and say that it's uh, basically we designed it to be a a shadow image of the rebel flag, which is not true. It's actually based off of St. Right. Uh, Andrew's, Andrew's Cross. 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 Yeah. Right. which is like one of the oldest flags in existence. So it has nothing to do with the Confederacy, but people have already said that we have to change our flag. And so uh, I, I don't have a problem with, and I think the state of Mississippi probably should update theirs, but you're right that the problem is, and, and this is the issue that you have when we have these debates, the problem is the other side is not arguing in good faith because the second that you capitulate and do the, the quote-unquote reasonable things, which most people would at least see the argument for, they immediately start coming out after Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and everything else. And so that's the reason that there's so much animosity on this is because we already know going into this fight that the other side is not arguing in good faith, and that's why people are hesitant to really even give an inch, in my opinion. Right. That's right. I mean, we, we, we're at a point, I, I had a, and I, I kind of close up on this. Sure. A, a man has been posting back and forth with different people arguing on my Facebook post. It's like at, I don't know, 1,500 reactions right now and <laughs> like 600 shares about my official statement. There's a man that's been commenting on there, and if I describe him like I would, I always thought he was really actually a Democrat. I mean, he may be. Um if you classified him as a Republican, he would be like a, a, a far left Republican, not even on the moderate side. Okay. And uh, that, that's me judging. And I'm judging not in a negative sense, but just on me kind of watching what, you know, he posts and what he does. He told someone that was going back and forth about this whole issue of monuments and Confederate flag, me being a racist and, and all that. And he said, we're growing tired. He's like, every time we give an inch it's not good enough he's like if we give a foot it is not good enough if we give a mile it is not being good enough he said the people of the nation are growing tired and when i saw him post that i really realized where i think that we are as a country not as a state of alabama not as district 88 but as a country Mm -hmm. i think that people are beginning to whether you want to call it the silent majority or whatever you want to call it i really think we're at a point that we are really growing tired and we're getting fed up because there is no compromise and that's i was getting back to your point about the standstill Mm -hmm. there literally is not there there is no monument that is enough there is no law that is enough there is nothing that is enough so what are we going to do going forward no i think you're absolutely right and that's something that's hard for guys like you and me to gauge because i mean you and me we're neck deep in politics every single day that's right oh every day um but but the average person i'm even seeing coming out and expressing this kind of sentiment that you're talking about that they're just exhausted by the whole thing Mm mm-hmm uh, and, and I think that a lot of people, at least this has been my experience, you can tell me if you've experienced anything different. Uh, my experience is a whole lot of the people that kind of follow politics occasionally, maybe watch a couple news segments a month, if that, um, they're kind of going with, okay, well, well, let's capitulate uh, because they haven't been here the whole time. They just sort of showed up for the, you know, the, the last five minutes of this whole, um, you know, episode yeah. that's going on in our country right now they're like okay let's capitulate let's just give them what they want and then when they do give them what they want they're like oh well that didn't work you guys are just as angry at us as you were yeah. before yeah and and so i'm even seeing some of the you know the i, I hate to call them this because it sounds derogatory i don't mean it that way but the low information voters that don't really pay attention to this stuff all the time they're kind of coming into this and realizing how unreasonable some of these arguments are. And I, I think maybe that that winds up moving the ball a little bit, but right now it, it does seem to be at that stillmate. Yeah. I mean, it, we, we're at a point that it, it um, in my opinion, it is a sad state. I mean, we're, 
I thought we were past a lot of the things that we're we're working towards. I, I, maybe I'm ignorant, but I I never grew up thinking about racial inequality. I never grew up, you know, I, I, even in, in the days, most of my life when I went to public school, sure. that I looked at anybody that was black and thought them of any different than me. I, re- I, I, I tell you that with the truth. The men that I have worked with and that work for me, now that I'm a company owner, like my favorite installer is a black man from Selma. Mm. I mean, he he is a friend. Like he knows things about me that nobody else knows. That my best friends don't even know. And I consider yep. him a friend, a true friend. And, um, you know, I, I, I didn't see it that way. And we're at a standpoint where it, literally it's it's like if you're if you're this, you know, if, if you're not this, then you're this. And there there is no there is no compromise. There is no middle ground. And we need to figure it out quick. Uh, because many things around our country and our state and our communities depend on us figuring it out quick. And sadly, I think it's, it is uh, the deep state or whatever you want to call it. I think it's the bigger picture to keep us divided. I, I think that if you study people like Cloward and Piven, Saul Alinsky, all the way yeah. back to Marx, that that is the intended goal. They want to keep as much division as possible because that progresses. That's where progressive comes from, mm-hmm. the agenda. But thank you so much, Will. I appreciate you coming on the program, and we, of course, wish you the best. Yeah, thank you, Caleb, and I hope you have a blessed day, and uh, I look forward to talking to you again. All right, same to you. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. All right. As we said, that was Will Dismukes of District 88, a representative here in the State House uh, for the state of Alabama, and we will be back in just a minute on Tactics. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow sun of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances. <laughs> 